What's up guys, I'm Ira Rochelle and this is Nuggets of Truth. About a year ago, we posted a video entitled Territorial Spirits, which you can find under our 2D category. Now in that video, we went into detail explaining what territorial spirits are and where we can find them in the Bible. This now begs the question, how do we break through that territorial spirits block so that we can, you know, get our prayers answered? Well, if we go back to that same main verse from that video, Territorial Spirits Part 1, we'll find a solution to getting our prayers and promises through the territorial spirits over our cities and our nations. So Daniel chapter 10 verses 12 through 14, it says, Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia, and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is for the days yet to come. This is Gabriel speaking to Daniel about his prayer request to understand what he had seen in a previous vision. Now, according to Gabriel, from the first day that Daniel set his heart to understand and humbled himself before God, God heard his words and Gabriel was sent with an answer. Now, this tells us that there are three key things that are needed to get our answered prayers to break through the territorial spirit's blockades. Now, the first thing is to set your heart to understand. Many of us take this phrase for granted. We just kind of look at it from a surface standpoint and leave it there. Okay, we, we want to know what it is that we just saw. We want to understand the vision, but it's, it's so much more than that. It's a lot deeper than just a desire to know. For instance, the word translated there as set is the Hebrew word that I'm not going to try to even pronounce. And it means to be durable, healthy, to not be easily deceased or uprooted to last a long time to continue to be in a certain state for a considerable duration that one word alone is much more than your average christian making a prayer request to god it's firmly deciding in your heart that you will hear from god regardless of how long it takes regardless of what happens regardless of what you see in the physical it means you will continue with great passion and desire to hear from god how can we be sure? Let's read this verse one more time. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. Gabriel made it clear to Daniel that from the moment that he set his heart to understand, or the moment that Daniel prayed an effectual fervent prayer of faith from his heart, Gabriel was sent with an answer. So why does it matter that Daniel desired it in his heart? Because aren't all of our prayers like this? Don't all of our prayers stem from our heart? Well, the simple answer is no. Most of the time when we pray, we, we may want an answer, but we don't set it in our hearts to receive that answer. We don't desire it with our heart because out of the heart comes all of our thoughts, desires, and actions. So then we can understand why it's so important that Daniel set it in his heart to understand because if he set a firm, unshakable decision in his heart, then his actions will follow accordingly through effectual fervent prayers. This is the difference. Most of us, when we pray, we pray for maybe five minutes and then we give up and we move on we don't set it in our heart to pray continuously day after day until we see that come to fruition see it's not just enough to want it on a surface level we have to desire it within our hearts so that we become like jacob and wrestle with god until we receive our answer genesis chapter 30 verse 24 through 30 and Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, 
why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called that name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. This wasn't just anyone. This was God. Look at what the man tells Jacob in verse 28. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. The man tells him that he has striven or wrestled with God and with men. Now many will say, well, that's not the man calling himself God. Okay, sure. Let's read verse 30. So Jacob called the name of that place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. Jacob even declares that he he has just seen God face to face and was spared. If that wasn't God that he was just wrestling with, then that statement alone would be blasphemy. But you know, who never calls it blasphemy? God. God never corrects Jacob. Hosea even clarifies this for us in Hosea chapter 10, verse 3 through 4. In the womb, he took his brother by the heel, and in his manhood, he strove with God. He strove with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought his favor. He met God at Bethel, and there God spoke with us. This was no ordinary man. This was God himself. This is a great example of what it means to set your heart to understand. You have to hold on to God, seeking an answer regardless of what is happening around you, and refuse to let go until you have received your answer. So now that begs the question, how do you set your heart to understand? Well, first you have to have the faith. You first have to have the faith that anything is possible. You have to firmly decide that you will hear from God because God will answer. Without faith, your prayers will not be answered. It's, it's impossible. So how do we strengthen our faith? Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Faith comes from your relationship with Christ. Paul didn't say that faith comes through the word of God. He didn't say it comes from reading your Bible. He said it comes through the word of Christ. Why is that important? We are each given a certain amount of of faith. We're each given a certain measure of faith according to Romans chapter 12 verse 3. If we're being honest, that kind of sounds almost discouraging. Like God has given some the faith that can move mountains and get their prayers answered while others are given the faith that can barely get their name written in the Lamb's book of life. But here's the thing, the statement isn't hopeless. In fact, it's kind of encouraging because not all of us have been given the faith that can move mountains because not all of us have spent the time with God as those who have that kind of faith. Paul two chapters earlier in a verse that we just read, Romans chapter 10 verse 17, said that faith came through the word of Christ. In other words, our faith is built on our relationship with Christ, the time we spend with him, the time we worship, the time we pray. It's not just about reading our Bibles, though that's very important and I'm not knocking it. I think every Christian should read their Bible daily. It's more than just that though, because even atheists read their Bible. Even atheists quote the Bible. The devil himself quotes the Bible. Even Marilyn Manson reads the Bible. This is a man that's known for destroying the Bible at his concerts. He rips it up. He sets it on fire. He eats it. Well, I mean, granted, he doesn't swallow, but still, he even reads the Bible. He even said so that he likes the Bible in a debate on August 13th, 1997 on the talk show Politically Incorrect, which was hosted by Bill Maher. The topic of the Bible came up, and this is what Marilyn Manson said. Pay close attention to this. But why does everybody want? Why does think. everybody want to put the tag on? You know, oh, the Bible is evil, or we need to question. No, I'm not saying that. I like the Bible. That. I'm just saying I don't like the way people misuse it just as much as people could misuse it. If you music. like it, then be the standard and do it. That's yeah, the problem. I like the it as a book. Of the just like I like the cat in the hat. Say there's something yeah. and they're not. <laughs> uh, they say Did you catch what Marilyn Manson said? He likes the Bible. He reads the Bible. He likes it as a book, though. Like he likes the cat in the hat. Reading the Bible alone isn't enough. You have to desire to know the truth in order to find it. You have to put aside all biases and self-desires when you read the, the word of God and only seek the truth if you want the Bible to change you in any way, shape, or form. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You have to seek the truth, which is seeking Jesus, in order to find it. 
Lee Strobel was an atheist. He was seeking to disprove the Bible. It's only when he finally gave up his own desire and was like, okay, I want to know what the truth is, that he could no longer deny the truth that was in front of him. And now he's a Christian defending the Bible. So faith is built through your relationship with Christ. This is key to unlocking the first step to getting your prayers answered. Your faith has to be strong enough that when you go before God seeking an answer, you will not be wavering in your heart or action regardless of the circumstances around you. So the second is humility. Gabriel told Daniel that it was because he set his heart to understand and because he humbled himself before God. All right, so let's take a quick look at what Daniel did to humble himself before God. Daniel chapter 10, verses two through three. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. Daniel fasted. He removed all pleasures from him and only focused on God. Never once does it say or even imply that Daniel gave up some things. In fact, it implies that Daniel gave up all things that were connected to or symbolized rejoicing or celebration. Why? Because he was in mourning. He was putting his body into subjection. He was forcing his flesh to bow down to God so that his spirit might be strengthened and elevated. Christians today struggle with even turning off or muting their phone while praying. In fact, most Christians today struggle with praying for more than 10 minutes at a time. I'd even be willing to bet that the majority of Christians today either don't know how to fast or what it means to fast, let alone have fasted or fast regularly. I remember being in school and I was fasting and um, because every year at the beginning of the year, my family, we go on a 21 day fast and it was rough in school, but we, but we did it anyway. And um, I remember telling my friend, I can't do that. Or I can't eat that yeah, fasting. And one of my friends, we're the same age, looked at me and said, what is that? Does that have to do with running? The worst part is that she wasn't kidding. She wasn't trying to be funny. She was serious. She had no idea what fasting was. She had never heard the words fasting. And just to clarify, I went to a Christian school and we weren't children. Like we weren't little kids, we were kids, but we weren't little kids. Like we were learning how to drive. We were preparing to get our license the next year. So we're about 15 years old. We're not little kids. We should, we should know what fasting is by now. We should at least have heard the words to fast, fasting, what it means. We should not associate fasting with a physical race like cross, like cross country. That should not come to our mind. Anyways, I'll come off of my little mini rant. David was called a man after God's own heart by God himself. And look at what David writes in the Psalms, Psalm 69 verse 10. When I wept, I humbled my soul with fasting. According to David, he wept and mourned with fasting. He humbled himself through fasting. Paul was arguably the greatest apostle who ever lived, and he fasted regularly. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. How does Paul discipline his body to keep it under control? Well, he clarifies that for us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. It says, In toil and hardship, through many a sleepless nights in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. Paul fasted often in order that his body would be subject to Christ. Now some will say, but Ari, that verse didn't say anything about fasting. The words translated without food is the Greek word that I'm not going to try to pronounce, which means to go without food for religious purposes, to fast. Paul most definitely fasted, and he fasted often. When we fast, we often fast food alone. But here's the thing. We don't live off of food alone, but from every word that comes from the Father. Then it would stand to reason that our bodies may be put into subje subjection. It may be put into submission, but our flesh is still being fed. Why? Because when we fast only physical food, we aren't fully giving our spirit a chance to grow. We have to cut out the secular if we want to overcome the secular. 
How can we break through territorial spirits, blockades, and the heavenlies if we can't even tear down the strongholds in our everyday lives? So when we fast, yes, you need to fast food, but also fast the secular, secular TV, secular music, social media, and allow your spirit a fighting chance to grow and begin to thrive so that your prayers may penetrate the blockade that is stopping your prayers from being answered in the first place. So if Paul is arguably the greatest apostle who ever lived and he fasted on a reg, shouldn't we also fast regularly? Shouldn't our children be fasting as well? How do we, how can we say that we want our prayers answered, but we don't want to put in the work to get our prayers answered? Now the third and final key ties in with the first key is persistence. You have to be persistent if you want to break through that territorial spirit's blockades. If you want answered prayers, you have to keep praying until you see your answer. This is why the first key is so important. Unless you firmly set in your heart to understand or receive an answered prayer, then you won't pray consistently. You won't be like Jacob who held on to God until he received his blessing. You won't be like Elijah who prayed until he saw a cloud come up from the water. You won't be like Daniel who prayed until he was given the understanding of his vision. Jesus himself urged his followers to pray effectual fervent prayers with the parable of the persistent widow. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 through 8 says, and he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says. And will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the kind of faith that Jesus is looking for in his followers. The faith that no matter what the world says, no matter what the circumstance looks like, no matter how impossible it may seem, you still pray without doubt, for you know in whom you believe. Because did you catch what Jesus said? He didn't say that God wouldn't delay. He said he didn't. He wouldn't delay long over them, but he would give justice to them speedily. So let's just sum everything up for you guys real quick. There are three keys to breaking through the territorial spirit blockade and getting your prayers answered. The first is to firmly set in your heart that God will answer you. You have to have an unshakable desire and faith that you will hear from God that he will answer your call and that nothing and no one can stop your prayers from being answered. The second key is to humble yourself through fasting. Fasting breaks down strongholds that we may not see with our natural eyes. It's only through forcing your body into submission that your spirit can grow and flourish, allowing your prayers to be answered. Lastly, the third key is to continue until you see your prayers answered. Just as Jacob refused to let go of God until he received his blessing, so must we refuse to stop praying until we receive our answered prayers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it answered any questions that you may have had on getting your prayers through the territorial spirits blockades and getting answers back. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.